Welcome everybody. Thanks so much for tuning in. I'm Candace Kruger, my lovely co-host, Danielle Doty. Hey everyone. And you know, we are two former pageant girls who just happen to love sports, right? I think pageant pageant is its own sport, don't you? That is so true. <laughs> that is so true. We could talk about that. We could do a whole podcast <laughs> on that right there. I think it's competition too, so hey, <laughs> we might be a little pro in this sport too. It is, but we love sports and we love chatting about sports and we thought, you know what? Why not just sit down and talk about it on camera? And what better day than to have the CWS going on, A&M and TCU up, up in this game. So now you know what we're going to talk about. We're talking College World <laughs> Series today. Both of our teams happen to be playing today, which we're going to get to that in just a minute. First, we just have to talk about the College World Series in general. An incredible game last night. I don't know if you caught Oregon State just killed LSU. Sorry, Jeff, our producer over here who happens to be a huge LSU fan. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that, Jeff. But, I mean, they just ran over them, 13 to one. Grand slam. First grand slam in the TD Ameritrade Park in the history of the park. That's pretty incredible. Amazing. Sadly though, what we really want to focus on today is that our two teams happen to be in the loser bracket. It's okay. Not where we want to be though. One of us is going to come out on top. Exactly Might where I dreaded <laughs> this going actually. You know, I thought the, I thought the baseball gods were on our side for once by us not having to play TCU in the Super Regional, I thought, oh my goodness, finally, we're getting some love. And here we are, we made it to Omaha, and here are we playing against the Horn Frogs. I mean, seriously. We have quite the history. We took your place in the Big 12. Now we're the only team in the Big 12 at the CWS. Mm -hmm. And this is our fourth year back in a row. We've been one of eight teams that have made it four consecutive years. I mean, you guys are just it's old hat for y'all in Omaha. It is, and I think experience is kind of what plays into our our, our game going forward towards y'all. Um, I think it's tough being there. For sure, and you actually spoke to your boyfriend play yes. for TCU he in did. 2014 in the College World Series. What did he have to say about it? Well, and I was there to watch him, so I've been there, I've been in the stands, and you know, that was, that was his kind of Question moving into it, he said, it's a whole different ball game. Mm -hmm. I mean, at TCU, there's about 3,000 3, fans in that stadium. And right. you move into the CWS, you're in Omaha. There's over 24K 24, plus. 30,000 yeah, people. With standing room. He Has said, the, the screaming that's going on, the fans, he said, if you're not there mentally, your game's over. Mm -hmm. oh, and I'm so sure. I think that's the biggest thing going into it. He said, it's hard to focus, mm -hmm. but once you, and I know that you, we were kind of talking about it, having those off days in between, if it's a good thing or a bad thing. Yeah. And for him, he said, if you're on a roll, I mean, TCU and baseball in general is super superstitious. Sure. And so if you're on a roll, you want to go out and you want to play immediately. Mm -hmm. If you if you tend to lose on your first game, like A&M and TCU, mm -hmm. a break is good. Right. Kind well, of and, I, and I think that break last year really hurt TCU mm -hmm. because they won two games right. and then they had that stretch of downtime. Right. They came back and couldn't pull off the third win. Mm -hmm. So I think in that case, you know, it tended to hurt them. Obviously, we're talking about, you know, this year. And I agree, you guys are definitely the most experienced team. I mean, guys, the Aggies haven't won a College World Series game in 24 years. Were you even born 24 years ago? Um, 24 years actually, like oh I am gosh. 24, so the last time was <laughs> when I was, was really born. old. <laughs> so we haven't won a game in Omaha in 24 years. I mean, well, we really, are due. Y'all haven't we're really due. been in the CWS. No, no. I mean, we're definitely very inexperienced when it comes to Omaha, but I'm, I'm really, I love the fact that, um, you know, we got all, most of our pitchers got some playing time in that, in that loss against Louisville, kind of get the jitters out for them. Yeah, um, now, we are actually going to be starting um, Stephen Kolick, which I really like him on the mound for the Aggies. The last game he pitched was 15, 16 days ago, and when he clinched the regional in Houston against U of H, against the Cougars, he pitched a phenomenal game in Houston. Um, he says he's well rested, he feels fresh, he's ready to go. And just on a side note, I think it's really special, his dad is undergoing um, cancer treatment. He was able to make it to watch him pitch in Houston. Oh, awesome. And um, he's actually in Omaha. So he's gonna be at the game. I mean, how special to be there to watch your son pitch at the College World Series. That's amazing. So that, that's really exciting. To kind of go against you, yours is a sophomore mm -hmm. pitching. I have total confidence in Brian Howard. He has actually been to the College World Series every single year since he's been at TCU, which is an accomplishment in itself. Right. But at 6'9"? Oh my gosh, the guy's a beast. <laughs> he the guy, is. The guy makes me nervous. <laughs> I mean. He's so tall, and I actually had a class with him at TCU, so I know him on a personal level as well, mm -hmm. and he is a really great guy. And 
I know when I was talking to Dylan, my boyfriend, he said he is extremely hard to hit off of. When he releases it, he throws it at su such a downward angle mm -hmm. that for those batters to get a hit off of him is going to be a challenge. Oh, so we'll see, sure. how, we'll see how we'll see how AM comes to bat. That'll be, that'll be interesting. You know, he didn't put up great numbers in the regular season, but in the postseason, those numbers scare me because he's 2-0 in the postseason. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I'm anxious to see how Brian does. And, I mean, obviously, that's going to be huge on both, both sides is, you know, how the pitching goes. Because yeah. pitching didn't go great for A&M um, right. in our first game, out, our first out with Louisville. So I'm excited. Ho hopefully we turn the corner there. Um, you know, and you mentioned we have a lot, we do have a lot of underclassmen. I mean, right. no one expected A&M to even be here. Right. Let's be honest. This is a shock. We lost 13 guys to the draft last year. I mean, everyone was talking about this was going to be a rebuilding year. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, and to make it to the CWS. Maybe outside of, you know, A&M's locker room and the diehard, bubble blowing Aggie fans who expected this so I'm just thrilled that we're even here I would love to get that 24 year monkey off our back and finally win one at the College World Series okay and then also get the uh, the four game or three game uh, monkey off our back losing to TCU I mean of course that last game that we played, played each other you. oh my god we well, played each other in March that one was 15 innings mm -hmm. that was at the Minute Maid Classic yep. And um, of course, then in 2015, y'all ended our College World Series hopes there at the Super <laughs> Regional and College Station. And then yeah. I actually was at the, the game in, that was no, 2016 was in College Station. 2015 15. was in Fort Worth. That one went 16 innings, game three. I was at that game. I took my you son. Were? Yeah, it was his <laughs> first. He ended up falling asleep in the stands right behind me. I have a picture of that. It's so cute. But, um, but yeah, y'all shattered our dreams a few times. And I think it's time that we uh, repay. Repay the favor. I know Coach Sloss said the game that's supposed to start after us, it's definitely going to be starting a little bit later because we like to go into those 15, 16 inning games. Well, that's what I was going to ask you. I mean, do you think this one will end at nine? Gosh, that's a hard question. I mean, hopefully, yes. I think pitching kind of gets you through the game. So as long as Brian Howard can get us, you know, pitching through that long series, hopefully up into the seventh and inning, eighth, mm -hmm. or seventh or eighth inning, mm -hmm. then I think we'll we'll be strong. Um, I guess we'll see coming up here, what, at one? Yeah, <laughs> coming up. Okay, so to wrap things up, we have to talk about, obviously, I mean, I think it's a no-brainer. Who's your pick for the win? I definitely have to say TCU. I think our experience is really going to show today, and mm -hmm. we're going to take it, because we're not, we're not here just to play this time. We've been here four years now. We're ready to take the championship. Okay, well, and I think it's a given who I'm picking. I, I just don't think that um, TCU can, can beat us a fourth time. I think it's our turn. It's our turn to give the favor back. I'm gonna put my Aggie hat on and show my uh, my Aggie pride. Danielle's got her purple on. They're a little twisted back I'm there. I'm real twisted. <laughs> <laughs> but um, this has been fun. So we'll have to do this again. You guys definitely tune in. I think um, next time we'll have to talk about the game. We'll do a wrap up. And of what the about game. this? If TCU wins, you have to wear this hat. And if AM wins, I might try to put it on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a deal. All right, thanks guys.